Welcome and thank you for watching my deeper podcast. Make sure you like us and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. It's a beautiful day out here today and I'm sitting under one of our trees just enjoying the nature that God has provided us. It's a gift from God and we should not ever take it for granted. You know, we've been walking through the book of Revelation and last week we see the 144,000 Jewish Christians are sealed and protected. And then John sees the result of their evangelistic ministry with the multitude. The Lamb is now ready to open the seventh seal. Have you ever been outside right before a storm? There's, there's no wind, just the portent of dark clouds gathering in the distance. Maybe every once in a while a quiet rumble and distant thunder. This is where we find ourselves at the beginning of Revelation 8. And this is what John wrote. He says, When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. The Lamb has opened the seal, and, and there's this half hour of silence. There's, there's no reason given for the silence, but you can imagine the tension that is felt as the silence continues. And then John sees seven angels who stand before God. The seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer. And he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. We, we, get, a, we get a glimpse of the seven trumpet angels preparing to sound and blow their horns. Trumpets were usually used to call to people to war or to worship or to proclaim festivals or for judgments. And these angels are prepared to blow their trumpets in judgment. Then another angel comes along with, an, with a golden censer. And that censer contains the prayers of the saints. Now who are these saints? I believe these are the saints who are under the throne in chapter 6. And the incense is from Revelation 5.8, which is the incense bowls with the prayers of the saints, which the four creatures had. And, and, and the, the smoke goes up from these prayers, and it's, it's good to God. He loves it. But fire is taken from the altar and put in the censer. Then it's thrown down to the earth, and the judgment for what has been done to these martyred during the tribulation is about to begin. The thunder, the lightning, and the earthquake are warnings of what's to come. And then in verse 6 it says, Now when the seven angels who had said the seven trumpets prepared to blow them, the first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood. And these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Imagine all this grass gone. This first trumpet is sounded, and the world experiences hail and fire mixed with blood. One third of the trees are all burned up in all the world, and all the grass is consumed. Now, this is a similar judgment to the seventh plague in Egypt that we see in Exodus 9, 23 through 24. And I'm sure many people will, at that time will blame climate change and the increase in CO2 on this catastrophe. John continues, the second angel blew his trumpet and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures of the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. This second trumpet sounds and what looks like a meteor or something that's thrown, it crashes into the sea. We do not know which sea, but the devastation is great. There are about 20,000 known near-Earth asteroids, along with about 100 near-Earth comets that could impact the Earth. When this happens, a third of all sea creatures are killed, and a third of the ships of the oceans are devastated. There are probably close to 242,000, over 242,000 known marine species in the oceans and seas. The actual number of creatures is exponential. There are probably hundreds of thousands of ships at sea at any one time. A third of the loss of these and of the sea creatures would be devastating. This judgment is similar to the first plague in Egypt from Exodus 7, 20 through 21. Then the third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like torch, and it fell on the, on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been, been made bitter. See, this third trumpet sounds what seems like a bright star, probably another meteor, falls to the earth. This time the meteor has a name. It's given the name Wormwood. And it affects a third of the rivers and the springs of water. These waters are turned bitter and undrinkable. Imagine the suffering and devastation from having one third of our fresh water supply suddenly becoming undrinkable. In botany, Wormwood is Artemisia absinthium. It's a shrub that, that's, that, um, 
that is known for extreme bitterness and has a po very, quite a few po poisonous properties. The fourth angel blows his trumpet, and a third of the sun is struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. See, this fourth trumpet brings about changes in the sky. A third of the sun is darkened, along with a third of the moon and a third of the stars. One third of light no longer shining. One third of the day and one third of the night without light. I remember the last solar eclipse, eclipse when, it was, when it was at its pinnacle. It was noticeably dimmer. Imagine that all the time, both day and night. It would be very, very disconcerting. Then I looked. And I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead. Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth at the blast of the other trumpets that are the three angels are about to blow. Again, we have this interlude where John sees an eagle crying out, woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth. You see, whenever we see words repeated three times in Scripture, they are significant. The meaning the remaining, I'm sorry, three trumpets, sometimes called the trumpet woes, are going to be substantially more devastating than the first four judgments. See, I hope and pray for the church to not have to experience these trumpet judgments. Not that we don't deserve it, but we have been redeemed. I place my hope in what Paul says in Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But we must be sure of our salvation. And we can be sure if we have Jesus. The Apostle John tells us in 1 John 5, 11 through 13, and this is the testimony that God gave us, eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. See, we can rest assured that we will be saved from this judgment if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, in doing this, we will be saved. Take joy, beloved, in these words. We can live with confidence. We have assurance of our salvation and freedom from judgment. Our assurance is based on the perfect and complete salvation God has provided us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we know your judgment is coming. We praise you, Lord, that we do not have to be worried about it. Until we are with you, Lord, there will be times of trouble. There will be times of turmoil. There will be times of tribulation. But these judgments, Lord, are, are not for us. These are for those who do not believe. We praise you, Father, and we thank you that we can be assured of our salvation by professing with our mouth and believing in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to do that. Help us, Lord, to share your gospel with others so they, too, can live with the assurance of their salvation. And we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. God bless. Make sure you like us on Facebook and YouTube. And have an awesome week.